Thank you everybody for joining us today for Transform Your Future, Explore Career Programs at Macomb Community College. My name is Patrick Jacobs. I'm an admissions and outreach coordinator for Macomb Community College. And with us today, we have Samantha. She will be assisting us behind the scenes. Thank you, Samantha. So what is continuing education? Continuing education is short-term non-credit programs which offer specific skill sets in particular areas. Typically students interested take advantage of these programs for professional or personal gain to develop skills for career, new job, advancement, or personal interest. Registration is simple. We have a new registration process just for you. Once you create a profile, you may review the courses offered, select the ones you're interested in, and put it in your cart and pay. It's that simple. The system also allows you to access your file, see your transactions, view your records, print receipts, and your transcripts. Continuing education units are the number of designated hours for your program. So one CEU is equal to 10 instructional hours. Length of training. Our programs are short in length. We have short-term programs from a few weeks to a couple months, all dependent on the program of your interest. Stackable credentials, your credentials never expire. So once you earn your certificate, it's proof you learn those skills. You can earn multiple certificates adding to your career portfolio, moving you along your career pathway or up the career ladder. With some programs, once you complete your certificate, you can apply and earn college credit. The return throughout your career. With our continuing education programs, it allows you to come back anytime to advance in a skill learn something new, or apply your skills to earn credits for a future degree. So today, we're going to explore programs in our engineering and advanced technology, our Center for Health Careers and Dental Assisting, our business and information technology. We're going to be meeting some of our students, and then we're going to talk about how to get started. Now, I would like to introduce Valerie Corbett. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Valerie Corbett, Program Manager in our Workforce and Continuing Education Engineering and Advanced Technology Department. Today we're going to talk about a variety of different programs that we have available to you in that area. We'll speak lightly on the industry approach that we take in developing our programs and helping students attain gainful employment. And we will also talk about our short-term accelerated programs. What we do over in the EAT department, abbreviation or acronym for engineering and advanced technology, is we work with a workforce solution towards short-term training. We provide training for individuals such as yourself within industry at the pace of technological advancement. Technology is changing so rapidly that we stay on the cutting edge of what is happening in industry as well as in the training arena, such as the courses that you could potentially be taking through the EAT department or any of the other programs that you'll hear or departments you hear about today. We listen and engage to businesses uh, to create customized training. So not only are we creating coursework for you as an individual, but we work with companies to help them upskill their employees, to retrain employees, or to get on top of cutting edge technology that their particular business might need training in. We also provide individuals with a pathway to meet high demand jobs in the engineering and advanced technology areas. The pathway to success that we will uh, help you achieve starts with our short-term fast track training programs, or what we also call our certificate programs. These will be programs that can range anywhere from five weeks to 14 weeks through our automated systems programs, our marine maintenance tech program, our truck driving CDL licensing, as well as a variety of other courses. But your first step would be to take some of those short-term certificate programs, which will then ultimately help you find gainful employment and may also help have you consider coming back for a degree, whether it's a two-year degree, a four-year degree, and potentially having you return to us in lifelong learning for future professional development uh, within the industry that you're working in or to retrain and those would be some of the areas that we help you achieve your pathway to success. 
Some of the statistics about the programs that we offer over in the EAT department are that we have high completion rates. Over 80% of the students complete the program, whether it's a five-week program, a 14-week program, a 12-week program, whatever it might be. Job attainment is reached over 83%. And after one year of working within the industry in which they have been trained through our programs, over 74% continue to work in that area for over a year and longer so that they find that it was a good fit for them. They stay within the industry in which they were trained and they continue the employment throughout that particular content area. The average starting wages for some of the programs that we will speaking to today range anywhere from 15 to $27 an hour. And in one particular case, we speak about uh, one of our Controls Tech graduates, which the Controls Technician program is one of the most popular and the most in-demand areas in the manufacturing sector right now. This particular individual is making over $75,000 a year plus overtime. This just gives you an idea of some of the uh, wonderful partners that we have regionally, nationally, within business, and some of the grant opportunities that will help provide funding for our students to possibly meet their tuition needs. Those can be with the Going Pro uh, grant, some of the WIOA through Michigan Works. We have our Michigan Works offices that are also part of our training, SEMCA, SEMCOG, the county, and then some of the companies that we work with, such as Ascension, Google, GM, just to name a few. The program dynamics and how we develop our actual programs uh, to determine what is the area that you may potentially want to be trained in is that we work with a variety of advisory boards. We research and uh, develop programs based on national and regional trends. And then we work directly with employers in our area, within uh, the county, within the state, and surrounding states as well. But ultimately, we you know, want to see the people that we train hopefully stay in Michigan. And so we work to meet the employer needs to develop the programs that you will ultimately be trained in. So we're going to talk about stackable credentials real quick, which Patrick did talk about as well. We have stackable credentials, uh, which uh, lead to pathways towards a degree. We talked about our core classes, which are made up, uh, let's say, if you're looking to take something in, in the automated systems area, your core classes will pertain specifically to uh, the industrial maintenance technician program, the controls technician program, the robot technician program, or the robot programmer program. But the stackable credentials, as Patrick mentioned in the introduction, are credentials that you earn that do not expire. You will receive certificates of completion from a comb for a variety of programs. You may receive some of the national uh, or state industry recognized credentials. And some of the uh, coursework that you will uh, take during the automated systems, any one of the programs that you may take, we do have a variety of courses that do articulate to credit towards a degree, which allow you to work towards earning that two year degree, which ultimately could lead to earning a four year degree. Here we'd like you to see a short video about the MTech, which is the technical training facility that we have over in Warren. This is where the majority of our automated systems training takes place. And one of our faculty will speak to you ever so briefly about the wonderful programs that we offer and giving you a chance to see some of the equipment that the students work directly on. This is the Michigan Technical Education Center, or we refer to it as the MTech building. This is where we do all the non-credit training, which falls under the Pocono Community College's workforce and continuing education. We have various different types of training. We have four main programs that we do for skilled trades, which is the robot programmer, the robot technician program, the controls technician, and the industrial maintenance technician. We also offer the marine tech program. It's going to be geared around the marine industry where our students will come in and they'll be able to work on inboard, outboard engines. These are fast track type programs where students can come through. They can get certified in these programs within five weeks, 10 weeks, 16 weeks, and hopefully by the end of that program, be interviewed by our employer and have a job. Not only can we provide students with the, the trainers that you see that are done in training facilities, the smaller trainers, but we have real live equipment. We have actual manufacturing cells with real live robots, the actual diagnostics, all the equipment, conveyors, tooling, 
everything you see in the industry, we have that on an industry level where the students can take what they do in the classroom or on a small trainer and translate that over into our main manufacturing cells that you would actually see in one of the big three plants or at a tier one supplier. We treat our training like you're on the job. So you come in from eight to five, programs run back to back continuously, 40 hours a week, five days a week from Monday through Friday. If you cannot make the days because, you know, hey, I got a job during the day and, you know, I can only make the evenings, students can come in from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So they can come four hours in the evening, 20 hours a week for five days a week. Again, it's like they're on the job. Before you even start the robot programmer, robot technician, controls technician, or industrial maintenance technician, you have to do the active placer assessment and also complete the three courses which are in the Manufacturing Essentials program. So as you saw, uh, our MTech uh, location is in Warren at 11 and a half mile road in Van Dyke. Our marine maintenance tech program takes place at South Campus, but our robot programmer, robot technician, industrial maintenance tech, and controls technician program all take place at McCombs MTech in Warren. Very briefly, and this is an at a glance, if you want more information, more in-depth about the coursework that you will actually be covering, in the contact information that will be provided to you at the end of this presentation or in your email tomorrow, uh, we can, if you just reach out to me, um, we can get you more detailed information about the programs that are listed here. But right now, these are just an at a glance. Your robot programmer is a seven uh, course program that lasts five weeks. Your robot tech, tech program is 15 courses at 13 weeks. Your industrial maintenance tech is 13 courses at 12 weeks and your controls tech is 16 courses at 14 weeks. And when you see the contact hours there, those are actual class time hours that you will actually be learning content in these areas. And so one of the things that we pride ourselves on is that you are going to learn the skills specific to gaining employment as a robot programmer, a robot tech, an industrial maintenance tech, or a controls tech. You're not going to have a plethora of um, outside uh, content that you're going to be learning other than some of the critical competencies that we're going to speak to in just a moment. So uh, if you need more information about any of these programs, please reach out to us and we'll be sure to get you uh, more in-depth information to you. As I mentioned, some of the other content that you will learn beyond the core content in the subject matter in which you decide to study in the automated systems manufacturing sector, the soft skills in speaking with all of the employers that we work with through our advisory boards or speaking directly to the employers, the critical competencies that seem to be a mutual uh, request and uh, concern or on a wish list for their future employees is to have these critical competencies built into the training. And all of these areas will be embedded within any of your coursework that you take through our engineering and advanced technology programs. We have uh, areas in creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, entrepreneurism, global awareness, technological proficiency, digital media literacy, and digital responsibility, citizenship, and footprint. These are all bits of information that will be embedded within your other content that you learn in your coursework. Addressing the digital divide became very important for our area specifically because of the technology and the software that we're using that needs to be up to date and cutting edge. And as we all know, we had the wonderful pandemic in March of 2020. And at that time, we, you know, the world stopped for a moment. And what we had to do was address how are we going to move forward with training individuals. And one of the things that we do pride ourselves on is in our area, we were able to flip the switch and get the majority of our programs able to run virtually. And in being able to do so, we wanted to make sure that anyone that registered for our programs had the tools and equipment they needed to be able to uh, work in a virtual format to have the software they need for their programs. So through grant funding, our director was able to achieve uh, the ability for us to be able to provide free laptops to students in our boot camps, our fast track training in the automated systems area, as well as the marine maintenance program 
all students will receive this laptop at a $1,500 value uh, to them, and it will be loaded with the software that they need in advanced technology so that you can be successful in the training that you take through our EAT programs. The uh, last two programs that I do want to speak to you about is our Marine Maintenance Technician Program and our Truck Driving Class A CDL program as well. And both of these are extremely popular right now. Truck driving is so in demand. Uh, these programs last seven weeks and four weeks in length. They're uh, speaking to the Marine Maintenance Technician Program. Many people think boats, warm weather, summer, I'm only going to be working for three months in Michigan. The Marine Maintenance Technician Program provides year-round work for you. Uh, you know, 12 months of the year, you will be gainfully employed for an entire year in the Marine Maintenance area. And starting wages for those uh, particular jobs start at $15 to $18 an hour. Truck driving school, Class A CDL licensing, you will um, start at wages of $14 to $20 an hour. But believe me that those wages are much higher. There was a great article that just came out today with regards to that, and the numbers were um, just uh, mind blowing what companies are paying to uh, get individuals to become truck drivers for their businesses. And we do have immediate job placement in those areas. We have waiting lists in the marine maintenance area and the truck driving. We have individuals just calling us daily to hire individuals in these areas. So if either of these are of interest to you, uh, we welcome you to reach out to me and we will be sure to get additional information to you for these two programs or any of our four automated systems programs. And at this time then, I would like to introduce my illustrious colleague, Michelle Valen, the Director of Center for Health Careers. Michelle? Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Well, uh, welcome everyone. I'm happy to be here to talk to you about the short-term programs that we have in the health area. So as you probably know, healthcare jobs are in very high demand, not only due to the pandemic, but due to the fact that Americans are aging very rapidly. Many people are aging out of the workforce. Um, those baby boomers are leaving jobs that are wide open. And so we see very high demand um, for the careers that we're training you for. Each of my programs has an industry recognized certification attached. So what that means is you're either going to be trained to earn a um, credential from a third party that will lead to um, a license in the state of Michigan to practice or a national certification that employers want you to have in order to be successful on the job. We offer convenient class schedules uh, with expert faculty. The class schedules, um, as Valerie mentioned earlier, um, we are um, pivoting from all on ground to either a hybrid or completely online format for training. So that makes it very convenient for working adults um, or people who are taking classes um, in college and wanna add a, an additional short-term certificate for um, increasing their employability. So I like to break these programs up into two different areas. We have people-centered and business-centered. Um, the people-centered is just like it sounds, you're gonna be working with the community um, in um, health systems. And we've got certified nurse assistant, home care assistant, certified fitness trainer, pharmacy technician, phlebotomist, for, uh, laboratory assistant, and then we have business centered, which are your certified professional coder and your certified medical reimbursement specialist, which is our medical billing program. Um, in addition to the high growth rates, we are seeing um, many of the wages increasing uh, rapidly due to the demand for workers. We just don't have enough um, to fill the positions that are out there. And so, the um, state of Michigan has actually added um, $2.20 to um, base wages in the healthcare industry for those frontline workers. And I've also seen um, our local employers um, increase their base wages. Um, I did a quick scan last week of Indeed and for uh, nursing assistants, we're seeing wages starting at $20 up to $25 an hour and hiring bonuses anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000. So if you're interested in a nursing career, you might want to get a head start um, by taking our short-term training programs and earning great wages uh, while 
um, networking, um, continuing your education, or just making one of these programs your career. All of our major health systems sit on our advisory boards and make sure that our program curriculum is um, what they need um, for today's um, patients. We also um, have them assist us with uh, figuring out what kind of teaching equipment we're going to need. So we have um, state-of-the-art equipment, a um, lot of simulated equipment. So um, you're just being able to do hands-on things without actually working on patients, which is really cool. So we have, um, usually we can do our training in nine months or less, depending on the program. I have one semester programs. Um, so nursing assistant is two courses. Uh, it includes your clinical training. Um, we are issuing a certificate that qualifies for the state of Michigan licensing exam, which is necessary in order to work in many long-term care as well as hospital settings. Um, that is actually um, eight weeks long right now. You do, um, it's a hybrid format. Uh, we have the lecture done remotely online with faculty and then your lab practices at our South Campus in Warren. And then the clinical, you go with your instructor to um, a local nursing home to um, get those skills uh, with actual patients. Home care assistant consists of two courses as well. That is actually the nursing assistant lecture and lab class. And then there's an additional six hour home care uh, course that you would take in order to earn the certificate for home care assistant. Some um, people decide they don't want to work in an inpatient setting. They want more of the um, uh, in-home experience. And so we offer that as an additional certificate. Uh, certified personal fitness trainer is um, one of the exciting new programs, or not new programs, we had it quite some time at Macomb, but um, that's also seeing um, a rapid increase in demand. We have one class, which is um, nine weeks long, and there's an optional 30-hour unpaid internship that goes with that that leads to a national certification through our partners at the World Instructor Training School. And I believe you're going to hear from Erin a little bit later, one of the successful students in that program. Um, if you're entrepreneurial in spirit, um, you may want to consider uh, pairing the certified fitness trainer with one of our entrepreneurial certificates uh, because fitness trainers can do quite well um, with their own business, not only working in um, as independent in a local gym, but many fitness trainers also um, have their own business outside of the gyms. Then we have phlebotomy, which is very popular. It's one class with an internship. It's 40 hours. Um, the unpaid internship is two weeks uh, full-time um, at a local hospital um, where you're gonna do a minimum of 100 venipunctures, which is drawing blood. Um, and that what leads to um, uh, preparation for the phlebotomy technician exam through the American Medical Technologist. I will tell you that uh, the majority of our students are offered employment right from their internships. Um, so if you wanna you know, get a quick, you know, like I said, 40 hours, usually over about um, eight weeks long, and then your internship, you're going to be done in that one semester and employed right away. Now we have our two semester programs. Pharmacy Technician is probably my longest program. This is seven courses that can be done over two semesters and includes an optional, not an optional, either a 160 retail internship or a 200 hour um, hospital internship. So it really depends on where your interests are. The um, retail internship, uh, they all are unpaid, but the retail has more flexible hours. So if you are taking care of family and you can't commit to a full-time schedule for an internship, retail would probably be the best bet for you. But either way, you're still being prepared to take this um, licensing exam through the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board that will get you your um, license from the state of Michigan to practice. The Certified Professional Coder, um, is one of our business programs that is five courses, um, two prerequisite classes are medical terminology and Microsoft Office. So if you've had those courses in college before, you can apply those and just jump right into the three core courses um, for the CPC. Um, we also have uh, an exam preparation course that's included um, into those. So um, in coding, you are 
um, tested on your speed and accuracy on the codes that you are submitting. And, and what that job is, is you're submitting actual procedural codes um, or um, supp like supply codes that they might use in a hospital. And um, those are what the medical billers will be uh, submitting to the insurance company. Now, some people um, have both roles, they're um, coders and billers. And so if that is of interest to you, you might wanna also consider taking the Certified Medical Reimbursement Specialist uh, program. That's also five courses. And the two prerequisites are also the same medical terminology and Microsoft Office. So you would not have to retake those, obviously. You could just jump into the three um, billing courses that we have. Um, this prepares you to take the um, CMRS exam through the American Medical Billers Association. The laboratory assistant is um, a two semester program. You, do, you also need medical terminology for this program. And then the one laboratory assistant course plus an 80 hour internship. Laboratory assistants, um, sometimes in, in the um, health systems are asked to perform phlebotomy as well, but then we have other healthcare um, systems that do not require that. So if you wanna be um, more marketable, you could pair the phlebotomy uh, certificate with the laboratory assistant certificate. Uh, that's your choice. I do want to mention here that because we work in healthcare and we are providing care directly um, while you're in school and your internship to patients, we do require a physical um, health screening, including vaccinations, including the COVID-19 vaccinations, criminal background checks, and a 10-panel drug screen. Um, it was earlier mentioned that we have stackable credentials in WCE at Macomb. Um, you can also receive credit for prior learning. So um, again, if you take medical terminology um, in the non-credit area, which would be under my area, the, um, and you decide later that you want to enroll in one of our academic degree programs at the college, they will accept the um, the Workforce Continuing Ed non-credit medical terminology course is the equivalent of the college's medical terminology course for HHSC 1700. Also, if you um, are successful in taking our certified personal trainer certificate, you can get credit towards exercise leadership in the new um, WHES program. And if you complete the pharmacy technician program and then decide later that you want to enter into the medical assisting program, you can get credit for topics in pharmacology. This is just, um, again, a reminder that you can start in workforce continuing ed, come back to the college and earn a degree or a certificate on the credit side. And these are just some of the programs that pair nicely for um, that transition. We have an occupational coordinator who will help you with uh, preparing for the job, your, your job search and placement if necessary. She assists with barriers to success. So if you're struggling for any reason, um, you can reach out to her for some community or institutional resources at the college. And she's also our industry recruiter for our clinical internships. So my last night is just to um, kind of encourage you to come to Macomb and um, if you're a high school graduate, recent high school graduate, and you're looking to continue your education toward a degree in the healthcare area, um, you can start in one of our short-term certificates, earn great wages, and start networking. And many of the health systems provide tuition assistance um, while you're working for them. So you could be actually getting tuition assistance toward an RN or a physical therapy assistant um, or, or many other um, career programs um, while you're working um, in a profession you got trained for in workforce and continuing ed. And then for you adult learners, you can rely on a stable health career job market um, that will get you prepared very quickly and earn wages um, that are very at a very affordable price at McComb. So next I'd like to, I think the next yeah, speaker is Dr. Barbara Ellis, Associate Dean of our Dental Sciences Program. Hello everybody, welcome. I'm here tonight to talk to you about our dental assisting program through Workforce, and it is a 16-week program that introduces students to the um, world of dental assisting. It's a comprehensive introduction to the prof 
to the profession. And once completed, students are ready to go at, to work as an entry level dental assistant. Admission criteria, you have to uh, be part of our dental health career workshop, which we actually have one coming up on April 21st. It is virtual. You have to have a current um, AHA, ALS, or BLS certification, so American Heart Association uh, certification, CPR. We also require a criminal background check and drug screen and a current physical TB test and immunizations. The program itself is of a hybrid format. So all of the lectures are given online. All of the labs for the courses are in person at our brand new state-of-the-art dental clinic, which is on College Park Drive at the corner of Martin and College Park Drive. The courses within the program are Foundations of Dental Assisting. That is a 16-week course. It has an online lecture and a lab component to it. Infection control and safety in the dental workplace is a completely online lecture, which is for 16 weeks as well. But what you learn in that course is incorporated into all of your labs. Dental and oral anatomy is an eight week course. Again, the lecture is online and there is an eight week, one hour lab that is on our campus right in our dental clinic. Dental materials is a 12 week course, lectures online and the lab is in person. And again, that's for 12 weeks. Let me just, uh, I want to expand just a little bit more on the dental assisting program. Uh, dental assistants are in very high demand. Uh, we have dentists calling probably maybe three, four times a week asking if we have any students that are willing to apply for a job. Right now on our job board, we have 19 opportunities for students for um, work as a dental assistant. And the great thing is, is these offices, they know through this program that students are coming out as entry level. They don't have all that experience behind them, but that is okay because it works out very well because the students in our programs have the fundamentals and the offices that are hiring are willing to further train their dental assistants they are also willing to pay for any certification exams that they choose to take. Now with our program, after two years of full-time work as a dental assistant, dental assistants can apply for the Danby exam, which is a, a national exam to become a certified dental assistant. And that is nationally recognized. Um, other students that have been in the program are taking the program as an entry level to our pending dental hygiene program, which we anticipate will start in the fall. I'm going to introduce Doreen and I will let her take it away. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ellis. Good evening. I'm Doreen Vanderzippi. I am the program coordinator for Workforce and Continuing Ed, WCE, uh, Business and Information Technology, or also known as BID. Um, I'm very excited to uh, speak with you this evening about some of our short-term programs we have in BID, uh, programs that can assist you to uh, learn a skill and earn a higher wage. Uh, these programs can be uh, used as stepping stones to earn a higher wage, possibly while you're building um, and pursuing other goals. Uh, the first program I'm going to talk about at BIT is, in BIT is the Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, Macomb's Entrepreneurship Certificate Program will provide you with the skills and knowledge needed for to start a small business or other entrepreneurship ventures. Uh, as we heard about with, um, I think it was Marine Tech and also um, Certified Fitness Instructor, uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurship uh, in, and that kind of crosses over to whether it's EAT, whether it's health or whatever. So we do offer a program that is um, six courses, 
And uh, what I want to touch on first, though, is student profile. What types of skill sets would a student uh, need or be successful at for this program? Um, that is someone who has entrepreneurship thinking, someone who wants to be their own boss, maybe start a new adventure, uh, learn, learn some new skills. Uh, also someone who's creative, who likes to solve problems, good communication, and determination, has that grit and tenacity. Again, the courses are uh, six courses, and they cost about, uh, including books, about $698. This program is an online program that we offer, so all the classes are virtual. And the length of this program is about 10 weeks, so you could accomplish receiving a, a certificate in entrepreneurship in one semester. The next program I want to talk about is Administrative Assistant. Uh, this program allows uh, students to earn a Macomb Community College certificate and set themselves apart from other applicants. This program provides students with traditional ent entry-level job skills into the office environment. Student profile for someone in Administrative Assistant program would be someone who um, is responsible and dependable, someone who enjoys assisting and interacting with people, who likes to be organized, um, time management is, is a skill you'd possibly need or, or you'll learn, um, good communication skills, verbal and nonverbal, and it works well with the, with the team and as a member of the team. This program uh, costs about $841 with books. The length of the program is about uh, well, you can do it in one semester. It's about eight weeks. That's four courses. Uh, professionalism for the administrative assistant, customer service, communication for the admin, and organizing skills. Um, growth, job growth, and prediction. Um, these job, the jobs in the uh, administrative assistant, are growing faster than average, and they're projected to have about a hundred thousand more job openings from the period of 2020 to 2030. Earning potentials uh, in the state of Michigan is about $18.63 an hour starting, but in the Metro Detroit area, the entry level is about $19.33. Once students have completed this program, they will have basics, the basic skills to enter the administrative support workforce. Workplace computing program. <clears throat> this program is for learners who are seeking a solid basic understanding of Microsoft, app Microsoft applications. The need for these basic skills is essential to the workplace, as today's jobs are all dependent on these, these uh, Microsoft products or, or software, other software. Um, student profile for someone in workplace computing would be someone who has attention to detail, someone who's creative, and someone who can work as a team and in a team. Program costs for this uh, is about just almost $1,500 with books. And the length of the program was probably over two semesters. Uh, there are four courses and that they total up 20 weeks, which is just a little bit longer than a, a semester, unless someone's really ambitious and would potentially wanna do two classes at once, you could get it done in a semester, but we recommend two semesters. The job growth prediction for this is pretty much the same as the administrative assistant, um, faster than average it's gonna grow and about 100,000 more jobs over the next 10 years. Um, the earning, uh, Potential for this in the state of Michigan is $17.14 an hour is what we're seeing starting wages. And in the Metro Detroit area, about $17.54. Now, what, one thing we do uh, suggest is these two, this workplace computing program and administrative assistant program, they go hand in hand. But we encourage, and a lot of people do take both of them together because coming at it with a skill set of administrative assistant and that customer service uh, background and then workplace computing really is some good job skill sets uh, to be able to get a job and um, have marketable skills. So we definitely um, advise people to uh, get both of those. Court reporting. Now, what is a court reporter? Well, let's listen to this short video and uh, we can learn a little bit more about court reporting. This is a typical courtroom scene. You're pretty familiar with it, right? Well, are you familiar with which of these people has a career so in demand that there will be thousands of job openings in it over the next few years? Nope, not the judge, not the lawyer either. It's the court reporter. The what? A court reporter, also known as a stenographer, transcribes the spoken word at 225 words per minute using a stenotype machine. 225 words per minute. Stenographers provide verbatim transcripts and real-time captioning from exciting venues like courtrooms, schools, sports stadiums, and even home. 
and some of them even get to do so internationally. Electronics can't ensure or testify to the accuracy of the words or punctuation they're capturing. Sorry, I didn't quite get that. Making court reporters indispensable. Because it is a lucrative career with many paths that allow you to choose where and how often you'd like to work, court reporting is the perfect career for our diverse community. To get started with your court reporting career, find a program near you at ncra.org slash schools. Macomb Community College has offered court reporting for about 25 years here. Um, we are the only, Macomb Community College's court reporting program is the only program in Michigan that is approved by the National Court Reporting Reporters Association, the NCRA. Um, the NCRA is the association that offers the credential. And after you successfully complete this program, you will be uh, qualified to take this exam and prepared to take this exam. Um, also, Macomb offers it at a more, more affordable than any other online court reporting program. I, I checked around to a couple uh, uh, local or colleges near here. And in Iowa, um, there's a community college that offers it for about $18,000. And in South Suburban College in Illinois, oh, offers it for about $10,500. Um, so we give you a better value for your dollar. Student profile, um, what uh, quali qualities that someone would want or need or would be help them be successful in this program would be um, punctuality, confidentiality, neutrality, complete and full dedication to practice, just like you'd practice a musical instrument, commitment and determination, and the ability to learn from your mistakes. Program costs for this is a little bit higher than these other programs we've offered here in BIT, um, it's about five thousand, little over five thousand dollars with books for ten classes. Um, an additional cost to the program for this program is the actual machine that you will need to be able to uh, learn. Uh, these machines can be bought or rented, and it's about a hundred dollars a semester to rent a machine, and about five hundred to a hundred a thousand to buy a used one. Um, the length of the program is about two and a half to three years to complete these 10 courses because you, you can't stack a lot of them together because again, and you also need to be able to build the skill to get to the next one. So you really do need to practice, practice, practice. Um, this program, the benefit, one of the benefits is this program is an online program. Uh, so all of your, your courses will be um, not in a classroom, they'll be online remotely. Uh, internship is required with this program too, and it is built into the last class and you'll have about 20 hours in the semester of court uh, of that class semester for court reporting and 20 hours for freelance transcription. The job growth and prediction, um, after you complete this, you're prepared to take that NCRA exam and your potential jobs, once you get that credential, would be um, court reporting, of course, and that could be at a local, federal, or state level. Um, kept closed captioning is another opportunity or freelance transcription for law offices. That's, that's a very flexible uh, job. Um, the prediction for growth is, um, as you can see on the slide, uh, Michigan is fourth in the growth rate for these jobs. And the uh, FCC is going to be requiring, uh, well, it, FCC requires the expanded use of captioning for um, television, internet, and other technologies. So that'll be a demand that'll you know help with this skill set. And the Bureau of Labor and Statistics uh, predicts an increased need for captioners and court reporters over the next 10 years. Also, our coordinator, we have an individual coordinator for the court reporting. Her name is Elizabeth. You can see her contact information here. Uh, she says that we are getting requests every semester for, for people, uh, for jobs. People are asking, do they have anyone that's been completed the program? So uh, a, a very a good success rate of getting jobs after this, uh, if you could successfully complete this. Uh, the earning potential in the state of Michigan is about $25.39 an hour, and locally in the Tri-County area, it's about $39.60 an hour. Um, if you have more specific questions about this, because it, it, it does involve a little bit more than some of our other programs here in BIT, please reach out to Elizabeth. Her information is on the slide. She is a champion for this program. She is a court reporter herself. She instructs this program, and she she coordinates the program too. She has an awesome wealth of, of information. BIT and WCE's goal is to encourage students to learn to earn. 
we want students to come to Macomb to learn a skill. We want students to go out and earn that higher wage. And then because technology is growing at such a rapid pace, and this will require updating or learning new skills, so we want you to return to Macomb Community College to advance or enhance those skills. Advanced skills in the bit area above and beyond what I've talked about are project management, digital marketing, advanced Excel, Power BI, and cybersecurity. So now I'm going to turn it over to our MC for the night, Patrick, to uh, lead the student panel discussion. Great. Thank you, Doreen. I appreciate it. All right. So um, tonight with us, we have Aaron McIntosh. He's with our health and our public services program. And then we have Leah Moore, who is uh, part of the business and information technology. So Aaron, the first question for you is, how would you describe your experience here at Macomb? Oh, it was great. I love that. Um, the class that I took, the, the WITS personal training certification course, uh, World Instructing Training School, I love how they offered both sides. You could do it hybrid or you could do it um, in person. I personally learned better in a classroom setting. So to be able to, to um, execute that as well as the in-person uh, for the training in the gym was absolutely awesome. There's a lot of online only programs out there and you, you miss out on the benefit of having uh, a world-class experienced trainer actually taking you through assessments and measurements and warm-ups, cool-downs, all of that great stuff. So, um, and I'm, I'm aware of other Macomb programs that are like that as well. So to have the hands-on um, practical experience through the course there was literally everything that I needed to be successful as soon as I uh, was walking in the gym. Wonderful, thank you so much. And Leah, how about you? Um, the question was, how would you describe your experience at McComb? Okay, um, I apologize in advance for any strange noises, noises you might hear. My toddler is here with me and I'm feeding him fruit snacks under the desk. So um, my experience at McComb was really great. I uh, did my research a little bit and found some online schools and really loved the idea of going to a school right down the road from me and learning with other students that live in this area. And now I'm still friends with girls that I went through the course with that are court reporters and all of my professors at Macomb were local Michigan court reporters. So I thought that that was really important to be able to learn from someone who's actually doing the job here and has uh, a lot of experience to offer. So that was why I picked Macomb and why I enjoyed it. Wonderful. Well, thank you. All right. So our second question would be, how did the program at Macomb assist you in obtaining a job? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can double back to the, the answer I gave in the first question for sure. Just the, the practical hands-on experience that you wouldn't get with an all online course really had me prepared above um, many of other trainers that came in around the same time um, to, to be able to do that walk, walking right in. So it was actually a couple of years before I even got into my field of the personal training after I obtained my certification. And just the fact that I, I had the hands-on knowledge, um, you know, really, really solidified that in myself to still be able to go right in the doors and be successful pretty early on. Excellent. Are you referring to your internship that you had to do through the program? Oh, no, I was um, I, I was really just referring to starting day one at the job because that, that was optional to do the internship. And I was I was working a, a different job when I took the course. So I didn't have the availability to do the internship in the specified amount of time that you were able to um, um, do it. But just the, the hands on experience I had through the course itself still had me ready to go right in the doors and be successful. Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. And Leah, how about you? Um, how did the program at Macomb assist you in obtaining the job? So when I was in my final speed class at Macomb, we had a few different port reporting companies, um, freelance firms come to our night class and talk to us about job openings and sort of just offer a job. It's here waiting as soon as you finish your program and get certified. So I had a job as soon as I got my certification. Well, even before that, because I was able to work under the company's license. 
license for a little bit until I was fully certified. So I had a job just the day I finished reporting school. Nice. Nice. Wonderful. Excellent. All right. So what, what type of advice would you give or share to a prospect student um, who are maybe interested in the program that you went into? We'll start with Aaron. All right. Yeah, I, I would definitely say if, if you have a, a passion for helping people and a passion for, you know, just helping um, change things in our society as far as people's health are concerned and, um, and doing something about it, that eight week certification helped me change hundreds of lives um, so far to this day. And um, it, it's, it's such a, an honor to be able to, to do that, you know, especially with the, with the wave of online training that's taking place, which is perfectly fine. You're still being able to help people, but um, the I don't think the personal in in gym training will ever go anywhere because there's there's nothing like you know seeing somebody smile because of the results they're getting or high fiving you after a great set. Like that stuff can never be replaced in in my opinion. But um, yeah, would def would definitely advise for that. Again, the the fact that there's a practical portion that you're doing everything you would do in a, in a, in a gym uh, to, to obtain your certification at Macomb, I would, I would highly recommend the WITS course for that. Excellent, thank you. And then Leah, the question to you would be, what advice uh, would you share with the prospective students or prospective students in general um, who are interested in the court reporting program? Um, so my number one advice would just be to, really commit and make sure you have the time to practice because you can't go on to the next speed class until you pass those speed tests at 95% accuracy. So the only way you're gonna pass those tests is practicing. So what I think really helped me get through the program as quickly as I was able to get through it was I was a nanny going through school, taking night classes. So the boys that I nannied would take a two hour nap during the day. And I would set those two hours aside every day to sit and practice. And that is how I made it through the program. Wonderful. So I want to say thank you for both of you for, you know, spending the time with us today and giving our students more information and congratulations in both your professions and your certificates. Um, yeah. So I look forward to uh, seeing you guys in the future. And I want to say thank you so much.